everyone, and welcome to the Even Stevens Ranked Podcast, the podcast for all things Even Stevens. I'm Brittany Butler. I'm Ethan Brim. And today is a very, very, very special, special, because it is finally, finally time for our first annual... First annual. (laughs) Of three. (laughs) (laughs) Season wrap up special. This morning, my wife said to me, Honey, take me someplace that I haven't been. And I said, Why don't you try the kitchen? Because um, we're on a quarantine and we can't go anywhere else. Yes. Oh my God. Yes, so yeah, we are recording this uh, during coronavirus lockdown. So if you guys hear any small interferences sound-wise, it's because of, you know, the current crisis and... uh, And I have a two-year-old. Yes, you have a two-year-old. Who's at home. (laughs) There are kids who live above my mother and I who tend to start running around around this time of day, so yeah. (laughs) It'll be fun. Yeah, so I am so excited for today you too for this recording this is gonna be one of the most fun things i think we've ever done because we've never done something like this you know where we put a survey out to our listeners getting people involved that way i'm so 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 excited to see where all of you guys stand on the show or on the season yeah it's interesting i was telling you i have forced myself to not look at any of the results for the last month Because I think that's when we started promoting it was like at least a month ago. At least. And so I've been forcing myself to not look at the results. I've been looking at the number of responses we've gotten, but not the results. However, I did look by the when we got like five results in because I wanted to see what the heck it looked like when a survey got results. I I I just didn't know what the results were going to look like. Mm -hmm. And I told you that at that specific time I checked, almost... Every answer was like a five-way tie with the five people who submitted answers. And so I said, oh, no. That's why I really wanted us to get a high amount of responses. You know, that we had enough responses to work with so that there could be one that would come out on top, you know. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we hit our personal goal of 100 responses. Yeah. And I'm so excited because now we get to be like Family Feud. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I'll be I'll be Steve Harvey or do you want to be Steve Harvey? I'll be Joey Fatone. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my God! His his one job is to just announce Steve Harvey's name and welcome us all to Family Feud. It's crazy. Good thing they paid the extra bucks to get Joey Fatone because it really makes a difference. <laughs> I could literally be anyone. But yes, so I'm very excited because I was thinking Family Feud, they always say... We asked 100 men. We asked 100 married women. We asked 100 married men. It's a solid amount of people to survey to get an idea. And I started thinking of how specific the group of people we have surveyed is. (laughs) Yeah, they're just married men, right? That's all we surveyed was married men. Yeah, we only surveyed married male, even Stevens fans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) The idea of surveying a 100 even Stevens fans. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Is very specific. I, I like to think of it even as even Stevens has 100 people who care enough to like answer these questions and know the answers to these questions. I mean, 100 doesn't seem like a lot in the grand scheme of yeah. things. In my world, it is like that's a lot of people. Oh, yeah. For a show that it like we both feel is like very niche. Mm-hmm. It is crazy. Uh, I mean, I guess just like a quick thing before we jump right into the awards because this is the main attraction for the day. We're so excited about it. I edited a video a while ago, a few weeks ago, pointing out all the Even Stevens references in Honey Boy and put it on our YouTube channel. And within the last two days, YouTube has been putting it on people's homepages. No way. And recommendations. And the video currently almost has 200,000 views. Didn't know that. That's pretty cool. 200,000 views. That's awesome. In like two days. But yeah, so that's insane. So our YouTube subscribers have gone up like 150 subscribers or something. That's super cool. Because that's interesting because out of 200,000 views, 
like 150 people cared enough about even Stevens or Shia to subscribe. By the way, when you type, um, you know, even Stevens episode ranked Mm -hmm. your blog or and or my blog are like one and two. But I typed it in yesterday and there's a new one that hits number one now. What? Screen Rant did a top 10 even Stevens episodes according to IMDb. So they basically just took all the IMDb scores. Oh, uh, I've seen that. I just searched and we're still at the top. Okay. Speaking of Screen Rant, now that you mentioned it, might as well say this too. A lovely person who happens to listen to our podcast named Allison happens to write for Screen Rant mm-hmm. and did an article called 10 Best Podcasts About 90s slash 2000s TV. Oh, cool. And... Put us at, out of 10, out of a top 10, number four. Wow. What are the top three? Uh, The top three is The Watch, Speech Bubble, and Defunct Land. Oh, I know Defunct Land. I don't know the other one. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Big Orange Couch on it? Yes. Dang. Shout out to Big Orange Couch, though, because they're kind of like who inspired me to yeah do want to do podcasts exactly and i was looking at the list and i was like oh my god they're number eight and we're number four (laughs) we're not worthy (laughs) i was like this is crazy that's awesome though and shout out to uh wild chats get your head in the podcast they're number five yeah yeah wild chats good stuff over there Mm mm-hmm and so uh, about ours the little blurb she wrote Brittany Butler and Ethan Brem have reviewed and ranked every single episode of Even Stevens, and there are 65 of them. In addition to their written work, these two host a podcast called Even Stevens Ranked. They carefully analyze every episode and discuss its ranking. They've finished the entire first season. Occasionally, they'll also interview key players from Even Stevens, like Jim Wise, Coach Tugnut, Matt Dearborn, series creator, and Tom Virtue, Steve Stevens. With the advent of Disney Plus, the podcast is the perfect accompaniment for a rewatch of Even Stevens. That's amazing. So that is so cool. Thank you so much, Allison. That is just really cool. so cool. And thank you for telling us about that, sending us the link. Yeah. Uh, the coolest thing. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I know. I was like, oh, my God, look at us written up in an article, like a ranking yeah. article yeah. <laughs> that we are on now. Yeah. Pretty cool. So I want to have some sort of special music award style music because this is an actual award show guys this is like the oscars of our podcast and i wanted to come up with a name for these awards (laughs) every idea i came up with sounded so stupid like the stevies i was like the rankies (laughs) the rankies yeah it's like and the ranky goes to (laughs) yeah i couldn't think Yeah, yeah maybe we'll come up with one eventually but uh for today, it's just going to be the award. I don't even know how to like dive into this because the first time we've done this, I'm just so freaking excited. I was explaining to you that looking at these results, there is a way to do it question by question. And when I go to the next one, it'll just tell me what the top answer was. And so this will mm-hmm. be our way of opening an envelope with the winner. And I'm so excited. So how this is going to go is, well, first of all, wait, backtrack. I'm going to put in some music. We welcome you to the 2020 Even Stevens Ranked Season 1 Wrap-Up Special and Award Show. So this is how this is going to work. For each category, I'll give my personal pick out of the nominations. Ethan, you will give your personal pick, and then we will reveal... The only pick that really matters in this yeah. <laughs> in this particular episode. The pick as voted by our listeners and very excited to They should see. do that at the Oscars where the presenters give their own personal <laughs> picks. <laughs> Tom Hanks is like, personally, my favorite movie of the year was this. What about you, Kate Hudson? And then she gives like oh her my thing. Gosh, yeah. So it's time for the first award of the night. For the category, Best Lewis Scheme, the nominees are, (laughs) this is so fun, the Adopt-A-Friend program from Swap.com, installing a surveillance system to catch the SNL tape thief, what'll I do, babysitting, all about Yvette, napping for the needy, easy way, selling 400, uh, 800 boxes of chocolate, deep chocolate, 
and Lewis's Doggy Daycare from Get a Job. My personal pick for the best Lewis scheme has got to be napping for the needy. It's got to be. I picked it too. You did too? I almost picked, I love the what I'll do, the um, like the SNL tape surveillance thing. Mm-hmm. But just like, I, I love how in easy way, it's just so ridiculous. Yes. It's like the most Lewis thing <laughs> Ever. And I know and like, the most shy of thing ever too. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's true. It's and just it's just perfect. the parallels between him and like it's perfect. It is. And I'm so excited. The award, the official award, as voted by our listeners for the best Lewis scheme is Napping for the Needy! Wow. Cool. Woo! I like to thank I like to thank my sponsor. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> Imagine we got we got Shia to accept the award. Shia LaBeouf could not be here tonight, but he has sent a video. Uh, you should just do an impression of you like saying something. Of, well, like I like to thank all the people who who donated money. Donated the money to the mattress store uh, for napping for the needy. Uh, this this really inspired my future. Uh, from my from my art projects, and uh, yeah, bang bang. That's amazing, bang bang. Um, <laughs> that's amazing, bang bang. Does it have the result like the percentages? Forty eight out of a hundred voted wow, for okay. it. Okay, and what came? Are you gonna read like second place and stuff? I think you should just real quick, just say it. Because it'll take so much time, and then we'll like talk about it, and then it's like, I mean, do you know who came in second, third, and fourth, fifth, sixth place at the Oscars? No. I wish I did though. <laughs> Some of these I care more than I guess some of these I care more than others like the minor character one offs like I'm going to care more than this one probably yeah. but So yeah so for right now never for the needy one almost by half Yay guys we're all on awesome. the same page with that that's so yeah. great Easy way kind of like is one of those defining episodes of season mm-hmm. 1 and when you think of how good season 1 is that's like one of the two or three that you think of I think For sure So moving on next award of the night it's time for the category most embarrassing moment, which was a title suggested to us by one of our followers on Instagram, which I actually I loved it. I was like, got to use it. Got to use it. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to keep this one, this title. Uh, so the nominees are Isis Uncovered, Secrets and Spies, Ren's Unexpected Bathroom Accident, Strictly Ballroom. Ren Stevens got her first C, almost perfect. And Larry's video presentation slander, a week first week. My personal pick has to be Ren's unexpected bathroom accident. Yeah, same here. Same there? Okay. And the award for most Ren-barrassing moment goes to... Ren's unexpected bathroom accident! Again, Strictly cool. Ballroom, what a shocker. What's the uh, percentage in there? Um, shockingly, not everyone. So I think might be, this might be interesting to talk about. So, 69 responses for Ren's Unexpected Bathroom Accident. Isis Uncovered was the runner-up with 13. Ren Stevens got her first C with 10. Larry's Video Presentation Slander with 6. And three people skipped this one. <laughs> 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 Only 98 responses. Oh my gosh. Like the ISIS one, quickly it's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. But the bathroom one is like one of those things where it's like, even if nobody finds out about this, oh, yeah. in that moment, your life is crumbling. You're like, yes. how in the world am I going to get out of this situation? Like yes. with my, the dude I'm crushing on super hard right outside the door, everyone in my class is here at school or whatever. Yep. But you put yourself in her shoes. Put yourself in her shoes. But um, <laughs> in her sandals literally the shoe yeah. in the toilet <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so yay congratulations to Christy yeah. for her foot in the <laughs> yeah. toilet for getting out of that one congratulations so moving on to the next category which is sweetest brother sister moment this one was tough actually I think this one I had a tough time with. Me too. This one's not a clear, not a runaway in my book. No, it is not. 
The nominees for Sweetest Brother-Sister Moment are Lewis gives Ren the necklace for her birthday, Swap.com. You have your thing. You're funny. What Ren says to Lewis in Stephen's Jeans. Talent show duo when Lewis and Ren team up at the talent show uh, from Take My Sister, Please. When Ren says a heartfelt I'm sorry to Lewis in Secrets and Spies at the Water Fountain. Lewis helps Ren in Strictly Ballroom. And what's wrong with being perfect? It's not normal. From Almost Perfect. This one was really tough. I spent at least five minutes looking at all of these. It was difficult. I somehow had to go with it. I had to go with Talent Show Duo. Really? Yeah. Wow. That was probably my last one. It's a great moment, but as I just, if I had to pick, um, they're all very different. Like the dynamics behind them are all different. Yes. I was struggling between it's not normal. Mm -hmm. Steven Jean's one where she says you're funny. I was hung up on that one for a while too. I love those two because they're not bickering beforehand, really. Mm -hmm. It's all just pure, you know, love for each other one way or the other. Yep. I ultimately went with almost perfect. It's not normal. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I still am not confident about that one, but like we said, our picks don't really matter. They're not yeah. really set in stone right now, but I do love Steven's jeans, though. I love those two. I think it's almost a tie for me, but that's probably if I had to pick. I went with the talent show duo because, especially from like the, the screenshots I picked, you know, it's just mm. Lewis and Ren yeah. up on stage. They're smiling. They're happy. Yeah. They both ended up winning first place. I just kind of wanted to go with something where it was balanced. This one, they were a team and... Mm -hmm. It seemed like a, a good choice. They kind of revert back to yeah. to when they were little and, and like those memories. It's kind of a nice moment, I guess. Like I said, this is a hard one. This is probably the hardest yeah, one this I had. Was, this was difficult, so I'm excited. Like the award for sweetest brother-sister moment goes to... Woo! Talent show duo! Nice. Take my sister. Awesome. What, what's the uh, percentage? It's pretty divided. Okay. So, ooh, ooh, runner up. What's wrong with being perfect? It's not normal. Nice. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, between the winner and the runner up, that's both of our choices. That's weird, yeah. This one was pretty split, though. How much percent did the top two get? Just, I'm curious. Uh, 27 and 21. So, the whole thing was really split. That's like the most, that's the least percentage that the winner has gotten so far, at least. Three. Yeah. The fact that it's so split speaks to just how much people love the Ren and Lewis, how good they are together, and like how much people, I think, value that dynamic in their relationship in general. Yeah. With some of these other ones, I feel like it's going to be so split. Oh, man. This next one, I think, is going to be the most runaway. You mean it's going gonna, it's gonna to just be yeah, flat out land, one way? Landslide, yeah. Okay. So moving on to the category of best minor character. The nominees are Ivan, Charlotte, Artie Ryan, and Zach Estrada. Ah, this one, I think this is definitely a competition between two. <laughs> Me too. I do too. <laughs> yeah, see, I feel like we're different now. Really? I really thought about it. In my heart, I'm kind of giving Ivan an honorable mention. I knew you were going to, because you love Ivan. I do too. But I do love Ivan, and this is his only season. Yeah. He's literally only in four episodes in season one, and that's it. I just wanted to put that out there, that shout out to Ivan. Yeah. But for my pick, and I will explain why, I had to go with Zach Estrada. Wow. I mean, that, that I, it, I, mine was between Zach and Artie. Yeah, of course. Both obviously are in f later seasons, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I went with Artie. I just, he's one of my favorite characters just in no, general. No, me too. I, like, me I too. see Artie and I'm like, yes, like anytime he's in an episode. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I was definitely going back and forth for a long time. But I ultimately went with Zach because I feel like he just had more of an important role this season than Artie did. Yeah, in general, too, I think. And I, yeah, and, and I just feel like for this season, I mean, he was in Easy Way, which was super important to Lewis and Tawny and that whole thing. And then Strictly Ballroom, which it was his party and he just had, you know, it was this whole thing. And yeah. I, I just really like the role he played in 
the overall story this season with the Lewis and Tawny drama and everything. Yeah. I, I just, I had to go with it. I had to go with it. And that's why I thought of, I almost picked Zach. But yeah, Zach, you're right. Zach is the better, I think, character. Yeah. You know, as far as like how well-rounded he is, how much, how developed he is, obviously, even just within those two episodes, right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah. Because already we got like the shot of him interviewing Twitty and then in the and band. And the Cisco. Yeah. Uh, I just love that. I feel like people probably picked Artie. It ain't going to be Charlotte. Yeah, no. <laughs> It'll be interesting <laughs> to see if she got... Any votes. Any votes. So, the award for best minor character goes to Artie Ryan. Nice. Woo. Wait a minute. Whoa, in a shocking twist. In a shocking twist. Wait, did we just do a moonlight? No. Uh. <laughs> Oops, La La Land one, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Who got second place? Ivan. Wow, really? That's pretty cool. That is so cool. How, what percentage did Artie get? 57. Okay, that's pretty, that's kind of 57 high. 57 votes. Uh, Ivan got 22 votes, and yeah. Zach Estrada was after him with 20, and Charlotte got one. <laughs> No way. One vote? <laughs> One vote. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, it's hilarious. Vote. Because we were like, we don't even know if she's going to get any votes. She literally <laughs> got, <laughs> got the, the minimum you could get without not getting any votes. <laughs> and then another person skipped the question. <laughs> Someone's like, I don't know these people. Oh my gosh. But yeah, that's shocking. You know what? Round of applause for Ivan for coming in second. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Way to go. Yes. Now we have to have him on the podcast. I know. Congratulations, Eric Youngman. I think that's how you say his name. Yeah, yeah, I think it's Eric. Because it's like with a J, so like Jungman yeah. or Youngman. I think. It's oh, Youngman. that's true. Yeah. Either way, congrats, man! I'm very happy to see that actually. So, moving on to the next category of best one-off character. Oh man, this season was stacked with one-off characters. So the nominees are Ernie Morton, Swap.com. Yvette, all about Yvette. The Lunch Lady slash Elsa Shots, Foodzilla. Chloe, After Hours. Mimi Nagurski, Luscious Lou. Bubby Rose, Heck of a Hanukkah. Mr. Rupert, Almost Perfect. Had to had to throw him a bone, had to give him one. He's a one-off character. Yeah. And Irene Roman, Carnival Repair. Yeah. A lot of nominees. <laughs> I think I know who you picked. I had to go with my girl Irene. I, I had to go with, go with Irene. Irene. Good pick. It's not a bad pick. But I it's said Bubby one. would probably be a close second. Yeah, same here. I mean, and it, like we even talked about, is she, you know, it's kind of like a, you know, it's played by Donna Pescow. But mm-hmm. um, I picked Bubby just because I love her character. And I'm always like, man, like she'd be a totally awesome grandma. Oh, of course. And I just love Donna. Uh, in general, but yeah, I went with Bobby personally, but I do. I almost picked Ernie Morton. Oh my gosh. I know you like him. I know. <laughs> I love Ernie Morton. His little tongue wag. Oh man. Oh, I hate the tongue thing. Oh, don't remind me. I just got to chill. Doesn't <laughs> Twitty say that at one point? Uh, when Beans is like, my cousin Chris is in town and they're like, yeah. oh, there's more of you. Oh, I just got to chill. <laughs> <laughs> All that being said, this is a pretty big award. Yeah. The award for best one-off character goes to Bubby Rose. Heck of a Hanukkah. Nice. But not by much. Only 24 votes made really? her well, there are, Yeah, there are, more, there are more nominees too. So I was curious how that would that was going to play out. Because there, there's what, seven? Or eight. Eight, wow. So in second place... We had the lunch lady, Elsa Schatz. She was good too. I mean, I, I, I thought about her. The only ones, I mean, I wasn't going to pick Yvette. Yeah. Um, and number three is Chloe, because for some reason people really like After yeah. Hours. I, she's not a bad character. She's fun, but apparently we're in the minority with After Hours. A lot of people love this episode, I guess. I guess. Oop, oop, oop. In fourth place, my girl Irene, Irene Roman. Carnival Repair. I'm so happy she made Top that's pretty good. Yeah, I think, and that's pretty good too, because I feel like people don't necessarily remember her from that yeah. episode. They remember the episode more because it's like the flashbacks, but um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's pretty good. Four. That is pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Right under that would be Ernie Morton, fifth place. My boy. Mimi Nagurski in sixth. Mr. Rupert got four votes in people, seventh. Yeah, you gotta love Mr. Rupert. He was good. And then three people left it blank. So Yvette got nothing. Yvette didn't get any votes. Yep, Yvette didn't get any votes. She's the only one that didn't get any votes. Wow. Not surprising. Not surprising. I mean. <laughs> so, moving on to the next award. Best one-off villain. So yeah, there were so many one-off characters, we had to create another category, and we went back and forth about whether or not we should include Curtis mm-hmm. from Heck of a Hanukkah. We eventually decided against it. It was tough, though, but yeah, we decided against Curtis because he's literally a villain. He's the epitome of evil. Like, it's like having the devil on the list. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean, though? <laughs> There's literally, like, at least these other characters are, like... It's a little bit more nuanced, right? Like, there's a yeah, little bit, like, more to their character. They have a motive. They have this. They have yeah. that. Whereas Curtis is, like, literally the his purpose is to be the epitome of evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a straight-up demon child. And so we said, okay, we can't... It just It doesn't make... It, it's just too much to include him. It's, it's too obvious of a choice. So... Yeah. Give him an honorable mention, of course, for being the personification of evil. But <laughs> he's so bad. Yeah, had to had to give uh, some other characters here their uh, time to shine. Yeah. So, the nominees for best one-off villain are June Marie, What a Light'll Do, Blake Thompson, Lewis in the Middle, Wallace Randall, Deep Chocolate, and Jason Bagwell. Battle of the Bands. Bags. Bag boy. I have a question before you say yours. Okay. Did you go based off of who was like the worst or who is your favorite? I have one for each because I didn't know. It was kind of in the middle. For like my favorite, I was actually kind of torn. I got to give Wallace Randall an honorable mention. Yeah. I love that guy. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. of course again to the actor. He did an amazing job. Really good. But I had to go with the iconic choice, Jason Bagwell. Wow. Okay. I thought you were going to say June Marie. I picked June Marie. Oh, okay. Um, my favorite, like you said, is, is Randall. And I, for me, the worst is June Marie just because of like the whole scheminess Scheme. of it. Yeah. You know? Jason mm-hmm. Bagwell is arguably a worse person. Obviously, June Marie is, is, has a crush. You know, you mm-hmm. do weird things when you have a crush. <laughs> but yeah. Jason Bagwell is just a scumbag. A cuticle, whatever he said. Like... <laughs> Get out of here, bro. Now that I think about it, maybe he is worse than Gene Marie. <laughs> we need to make shirts that say, get out of here, bro, Ethan Brem, because you say that <laughs> so much. I don't know where I got that from. I just, I say, I've been saying it forever since like high school. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here, bro. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> like you said that about Ren. You were like, oh, just to get like a perfect record. Like, get out of here, bro. Anyway. But yeah, I had to give it to Jason Bagwell. I'm changing it to Jason Bagwell right here on the spot. Oh, wow. Okay. So the award for best one-off villain goes to Jason Bagwell. Nice. Battle of the Bands. Good thing I changed the last minute. Um, Uh, Still not a landslide. And in second place, Wallace Randall, Deep Chocolate. I think people like his character. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. How close was it? Um, Pretty close. Five votes separated them. June Marie came in third and Blake Thompson fourth and then two people skipped it um but that's cool we're very close guys Mm -hmm. us me and ethan and you guys we're on the same page a lot here this is really nice it kind of has like an objective a more objective feel because we're all kind of agreeing yeah for the most part because again like i said we surveyed a hundred even stevens fans yeah very very cool all right moving on this is a tough one It's not, but it is, but it's not, you know? Yeah. So the next category is Larry Beal's lowest moment. And the nominees are setting Lewis up for failure and embarrassment at the track meet in Stevens jeans. Stealing Lewis's jokes from Tick My Sister, Please. Flooding Ren's feedback box with insults, Lewis in the middle. And anti-Ren video presentation slander, a week first week. Okay. So we had a bit of a conversation about this in our week first week episode. Yeah. And as I was like editing that episode, I was thinking about it more 
I totally agree with you. I went with stealing Lewis's jokes. Yeah, when you watch the week first week, it's like you're like, oh my gosh, this sucks for Ren because and Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, the stealing the jokes, that's like one of the worst feelings in the world. Oh, yeah. You know? But I mean, it ended up good for them. But even though that episode ended well, I still have like a sick feeling about it. You know? Yeah, because that that was one of the things I was thinking of when I was thinking of like our argument about it was, yeah, but like at the same time, Lewis still wins first place and he still kind of wins it for being funny, like yeah. physically funny. But it's not with the thing he worked so hard on. Yeah. Man, yeah, that's a bad one. My second would probably be the track meet. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah. I know we talk so much about our things. Our choices <laughs> don't even matter. So the award for Larry Beal's lowest moment goes to stealing Lewis's jokes. Yes. Take my sister, please. By a big margin. Oh, really? Okay. By a big margin. Still not a landslide. The second one. Is setting Lewis up for failure and embarrassment at the track meet. Yeah. I mean, there's only one vote separating the track meet and the video presentation. Uh -huh. So I think I would personally switch them. Yeah, I could see I could see those those are pretty close to me too, I think. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Next category. This one was a definite I knew what one I thought was the best. So uh, okay. the category is Best mirror talk. These only happen in this season. Had to give them their own category. Uh, of course, this is when Lewis talks himself through life's little problems in the mirror. I really love these moments. Like I said, I wish that there were more, but then we talked about how it might be a little weird the older he got. Um, but yeah, these are really, really good. And I thought they deserved their own category and shout out since they only exist in this season. Can you imagine season three, Lewis, doing a mirror talk? That'd be so weird. I can, but it would have to be wacky. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I couldn't imagine it being, like, as vulnerable. A serious, yeah. yeah maybe if it had to do with Tawny. Yeah. But. So, the nominees are, as much as I like being on the track team and hanging out with my brother, I like being funny more. And that's from Steven's Jeans. It's sort of like I was possessed by the soul of an unknown comic. From Take My Sister, Please. I'm realizing that every time I try to do something nice for this family, nobody ever believes me. So now, I gotta figure out how to tell her, without telling her, what a lie will do. So I guess the score is, friend zero, Lewis really zero. Maybe next time I'll think twice before I save a guy's life. Lewis in the middle. Ren is Ren! Taking over is what she does. But not this time, my friend. No, not without a fight. Battle of the Bands. I almost forgot that one because it's so short. Yeah. It's like half a mirror talk. And lastly, I don't belong in this family. They'd be better if I was never born. Heck of a Hanukkah. My choice, honestly, probably by a landslide, is it was sort of like I was possessed by the soul of an unknown comic. Yeah, that's a good one. I love that line, too. Um, mm-hmm. It's just such a good line. Yeah. It's such a pure place from Lewis the Aspiring Comedian, which is my favorite aspiration for Lewis. Yeah, I think. OK, so my favorite one, I I, my, I love the line and it was my favorite quote from that episode. Mm -hmm. Lewis or uh, Friends Zero, Lewis Really Zero. I just love that line. But uh, I do love the Stevens Jeans one. Because it's just so much, it's like a validation. Yeah. So I, I do love that line. That That's probably my pick. I But I love the Take My Sister line too. I love that. That's just such a beautifully worded uh, monologue, I think. Mm-hmm. So the award for Best Mirror Talk goes to... Ah! <laughs> Lewis in the middle! <laughs> really? Lewis in the middle. Wow. That's kind of a, that's kind of a, uh, an upset, I think. Oh, God. A little bit. Yeah, I did not expect it. Wow. Second place is Steven's Jeans. Okay. Third place is What a Light Will Do. And fourth place is The Soul of an Unknown Comic. What a Light Will Do is third? Yeah. Wait, read that, read the quote again. That's the funniest thing happened to me today. I tried to tell my sister she's being taken for a ride. That's just more of like exposition, like an, it's not like an epiphany or anything. Yeah. 
Very He's weird. Kind of, that's a weird choice. Yeah, I'm a little sad to see Lewis's proverb coming in at number four. Yeah. Interesting. What can you do? So we're a little split there, but... Two or three of those were my favorite quotes from that episode, I think, from those episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you you really like the Lewis in the middle and that one one, so... Yeah, I did like that one. That one, I, every time I hear that, I just love that line. Uh, and that was my runner-up, so... That's a good one. I think. Yeah. So we're still in the ballpark. We're still in the ballpark, yeah. We're still in the game. We're still in the game. <laughs> so, next category. This one was a little... I think it's also going to be a little bit of a landslide. Oh, yeah, I think, I, yeah, it is. Yeah. The category is Coolest Friendship Moment. And I wanted to come up with, like, a better title for that, but couldn't really think of it. Um, so it's just Coolest Friendship Moment. Yeah. The nominees are Lewis's Intervention from Lewis in the Middle, Sloppy Joe Solidarity, Scrub Day, Becoming the Twitty Stevens Connection, Battle of the Bands, and Moral Support at the Three Eyes Wide Shut premiere for Movie Madness. I, I was pretty much torn between two. So I said, Lewis's intervention is maybe the deepest friendship moment. Mm-hmm. I really appreciate it for that. Like, we had talked about that a lot in that episode. We were like, yeah. wow, this is like, this is a lot deeper than we realized with the, you know, maybe you didn't realize, but we just saved you. Yeah. Sort of thing. It's just, it's really good. But then, what other real choice is there than becoming the Twitty Stevens connection. It's a good one. I mean, this one was hard for me. I do like how the Lewis in the Middle develops. Um, yeah. But my favorite is the movie Madness. Oh. Because for me, like, the Vat, there was no, like, the Vat is iconic, the most iconic, I think, per- personally, but there's no real, like, setup to it. It's just mm. them doing it at the end, which is cool. Mm-hmm. But I like Movie Madness because there was all that, like... Drama. B- as bad as Lewis was, you know, was, like, being, like, their friendship trumped all the hard feelings. Like, they were, like, we still got to support our guy, you know? Right. Was, yeah, that was the one that seemed, like, the least to me. I don't think it's going to win. I'm actually positive it's not going to win. But um, <laughs> there were three that I was going between. I was going between Battle of the Bands, the Vat of Sloppy Joes, and this one, but... I think, like, Battle of the Bands, too... With- it's not even just Lewis and Twitty and Tawny. It's like everyone, everyone coming together. Right. Yeah. It's just like, it's like such a big Tom and Ren. deal. And yeah, yeah. I want to look at all of these just as the season without thinking of how yeah. important this is to the rest of the series. Mm-hmm. This band arc keeps making little appearances. So yeah. um, I feel like a lot of people are probably going to think that way. So yeah. In that I, case, it's probably, I'm expecting it to win. Yeah, I, you're right. I, yeah, that's a good point. I think you're right, actually. Yeah. All right, what do we got? So, the award for coolest friendship moment goes to Becoming the Twitty Stevens Connection. Right. Battle of the Bands. Woo. In second place is Sloppy Joe Solidarity. I think it's just that image. It it's is. Image that people, it yeah. is the image. More than it the is. actual plot. Yeah. Third, Lewis's intervention, and fourth, moral support. A three eyes wide shut. I love that one. Though. I don't know. Yeah, I knew it wasn't going to win. I was one hundred percent sure it wasn't going to win. <laughs> so, next category. This one was just a fun, ridiculous one. This was the easiest one for me. <laughs> yeah. So, because this was also a a category suggested by people, just as like a fun, yeah, period, typical category since we are talking about a show that was in a very specific time period. Yes. Clothes were weird and hair was weird and just a lot of things were weird. This is the category most insane hairstyle. And the nominees are Tawny's talent show look. I found this last minute when I was looking for other things and I said what is on her head? I totally forgot about this look and then I said I gotta include this one. Ren's crimped and clipped Tree bait party look. Tree bait. Ren's weird blue elastic sticky outy ponytail thing. <laughs> That's the horse. <laughs> and just had to throw it in. Artie Cisco Ryan. Yeah, that's a good one. Had to throw it in. Had to throw it in. I love that one. Honestly, that's the most tame out of these. Yeah, it, that's the weird part. Dyeing your hair silvery blue is the most tame out of these. My pick... 
I know we had a big t- conversation about it. Two of them are from the same episode. I mean, come on. Yes, yes. But out of the two from that episode, I had to go with the more iconic one. I had to go with the crimped and clipped. I knew you were going to go with that one. Tree bait party look. I got to go with that one. And I said... Because every time that they cut to Ren in the bathroom for the first time, I get a genuine jolt of shock. I'm just like, oh my gosh, right. This is how she looks. Oh man. (laughs) Here's the thing. I went with the other one from that episode because I think that is the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen on a person's head. (laughs) And I've seen some ludicrous. And you've seen some ludicrous things on people's heads. Oh my god! It the looks... crimped hair, though. When I was a kid, I remember I had a crush on Ren. I remember thinking I was like, "Well, that looks nice." Yeah, <laughs> because like so, I think that's why I couldn't pick it. Yeah, you know, at the time, for some reason, we yeah. thought crimped hair looked good. Yeah, at the time, it was it was you know it was attractive, which is crazy. But now it, it doesn't hold up. No, but that's god stiff, no, that's stiff ponytail. Yeah, no, that's never justified. No, that hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> so, the award. For most insane hairstyle goes to Ren's crimped and clipped tree bait party look. I get it. I get it I get too, it. obviously. I picked it, but <laughs> but still, second place is Tawny's talent show look. Really? Wow. Shockingly, again, number three, Artie Cisco Ryan. Yeah. Last place with only five votes is Ren's weird blue elastic sticky outy ponytail thing. That's the worst hairstyle in the world, by the way. Yeah, it's not good. It's, it's not just good. it's not a, it's not like a plot point, and it's so brief. Yeah. I think no one remembers it, but exactly it's so bad. But I thought maybe people would have a different opinion after they had listened to our episode. I didn't know. I felt like we had to include it because we were just harping on it so much. As someone who liked Christy Romano as a child, I saw that and I was like, please don't ever do this again. <laughs> All right, next category. This is another really tough one. For you? Yes. I really was going back and forth with a lot of things here. So next category is one that feels like I'm at the Grammys right now. Uh, Song of the season. The nominees are Sacramento Girl, The Alan Twitty Project. Crazy, The Alan Twitty Project, which also is the first song the Tori Stevens Connection performs together. And Bunny in My Brain, The Lewis Stevens Experience. (laughs) Now, this was difficult. I had to really think about the season, and that's what was tripping me up. So Sacramento Girl, I think, should get the award for Song of the Season for season two. Yep, it's a better rendition. Because it gets a full version, we get a little music video... It has a whole thing. We really only hear it at the beginning band practice and Ren singing a little verse of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it is what kicks off the band arc, so it's important. And it's an iconic song, so that's difficult. But for the season, don't know. Crazy, I think out of the three, it's the best song. Yes, definitely. It's a genuinely good song. It's the first song the Twitty Stevens Connection performs together, Yeah, which is cool. But then we also hear this song in season three at band rehearsal. Yeah. So I'm like, eh, like, you know, so both of these songs we hear outside of season one. Don't tell me you're going with Bunny in the Brain. But then Bunny in My Brain, of course, it's so small. It's so short. We hear it, but we hear it twice in the episode. And it's only exclusive to this season. And this is the season one wrap up. So this is what made it really difficult for me. I was basically going between Crazy and Bunny in My Brain just because it's so short, but it's so memorable like so many people remember it. And so it was tough. Like I was thinking of it that way too, of like, it's a really memorable, funny thing. Oh man. So I think if we were talking about like straight up, if this were the Grammys, it would go to crazy. So I'm going to say that that is getting an award from me. Uh, But then as just a fun season one specific thing, it might have to be bunny in my brain. You know what? Speaking of the Grammys, I need a dissertation like this from every Grammy voter. Honestly, ever. yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, what are you picking half the time? But yeah. um, I, I went with Crazy. I think it's the best song of the series. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, And just Ren kills it. Mm-hmm. Bunnies in the Brain, it's it's such a novelty song and it's so ridiculous. And the, Oh, I know. The scene is amazing with Tom and the... <laughs> yeah, I, I just picked the best, my favorite song and that was Crazy. 
Okay. I see I see your thought process. I like it. So the award for song of the season goes to Yep. Sacramento Girl. I knew it cuz it's so iconic. It's so it iconic. And it's just it's tough, you know, cuz it is in the next season, but it is the birth of the song and it's a really iconic episode and so I get it. But runner up is Bunny in My Brain. No, it's not. Yes, Do it is. Do people really not remember Crazy? Oh my god, actually, actually, it's a tie. Between Bunnies and uh, Crazy? Between Sacramento Girl and Bunny in My Brain, it is a split tie. No way. 38 votes and 38 votes. Wow, that's crazy. I told you, I said Bunny in My Brain is just extremely memorable. It's such a small thing, but... So then Crazy is pretty close, too, because... Uh, 24. Votes. Yeah, so that's pretty, that's not bad, that far off. Yeah, that's crazy. I think people just love <laughs> But um, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> no, that's that's insane. Yeah, deadlock wow. tie. See, so this is funny. So, technically, wow, this is the first time there's two winners from the listeners right now. Yeah, all right. So, for the tiebreaker, Bunny's in my brain is gonna pick a number, and then oh, Sacramento God. Girl is gonna pick a number. <laughs> Oh my god. So it's songs of the season. <laughs> Our Sacramento right. Girl and Bunny in my brain. That's the whole point of the episode, right? Is which one is better. Yeah. They're competing for the best song, basically, in the episode. Right. Wow, that's kind of poetic. Well, I mean yeah. I mean they weren't singing Sacramento Girl for their for their episode. No. For their yeah. uh, But the Lewis Stevens experience came out on top from the Alan Twitty project in this voting. <laughs> Lots of love for Bunny in my brain. I guess. So the final category category. Whoo, I am nervous for this. This is intense. I said on the survey that this is pretty much our best picture yeah. at the Oscars. I, ha- I put an asterisk next to my answer, by the way, because I have some thoughts. Here. This is really intense. I am so nervous and excited to see what wins because there are a lot of nominees and a lot of different ways this thing can be split. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a six-way tie or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, the category is most iconic Lewis moment. Like I said, this might as well be best picture at the Oscars. This is yeah. insane. Because this is what epitomizes the season. This is yeah. this moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, here we go. Mm-hmm. The nominees are Lunch Lady Interview Fiasco, Foodzilla. The Vat of Sloppy Joe, Scrub Day. The Devil Bed, Easy Way. Chicken Dance, Heck of a Hanukkah. Casa de Fiesta, Almost Perfect. And Falling Off the Flagpole, A Week First Week. Whew. Okay, so, it's tough. It's tough. Can I ask you a question first? Yeah. Did you pick your favorite or like the one that you thought like was iconic? The one, again, I was trying not to think in terms of the whole series, yeah. but I couldn't help it for mm-hmm. this one. My own actual personal pick, I've got to go with Falling Off the Flagpole. I had a feeling you were going to pick that one. Just because, you know, in the show's universe, this is Lewis's first moment, really, as doing a Lewis Stevens thing at school and mm-hmm. trying to make himself known, and it's when he first sees Tawny and this sort of thing comes up again in the finale. It was just such a defining Lewis Stevens moment, I think. Like, at least to me and in the world for their characters. So that's why I picked it as most iconic to the series and its story. But out of the other options, I'd have to go with the freaking bed again. I knew you were going to go with that bed. You and that bed, Brittany. I don't know what it is with the bed. I was, it was tough. I think the bed might win, but, uh. I do too. I think it's going to go to the bed. But keep, yeah, I want to hear your thoughts though. No, I, that's it. I, that's it. I, I think we know where I stand on the bed. I just think it's an iconic episode. It already won for best scheme, uh, napping for the needy. Mm-hmm. So. I think that when you're talking about, like, within the universe, I think the bed even is important because, you know, you have also the thing with Tawny and mm-hmm. personally I look, so I went down and I was like, I want to pick the one that when you see it, you're like, this is even Stevens. Yeah. And there were two that I went to immediately, the vat of sloppy Joe yep. and the chicken dance. Okay. Just because I think those two, like when you see them, you're like, Oh boom, even Stevens. Like the one that takes you back to the show. If you haven't watched it in a while, maybe mm-hmm. the bed, 
I think is up there too. I think that's maybe three for me. Mm-hmm. My favorite is Foodzilla. Oh. I think that's the one that makes me laugh every time. Okay. So uh, I'm so nervous. I feel like it's I feel like it's gonna be the bed. I think so. I think it's gonna be the bed or the chicken. Those are my that's my choice. Here we go. The award for most iconic Lewis moment of season one goes to The Devil Bed. Yep. Easy way. That's it. It's the devil bed. I told you that dang bed. A dang bed. People <sighs> love that bed. That's what I have to say. It's a great episode, but it's just that bed. People love it. <laughs> so that got 39 votes. So wow. whatever is in second place could be tied. Okay. Oh, that's true. Because the last one, it was 38 and 38 tie. So let's see. Okay. Second place. No, definitely not a tie. But second place is Casa de Fiesta. Oh, I, that's another one I love, but I just love the whole idea of that. That's probably my second favorite, but... um. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Third place is Lunch Lady Interview Fiasco. Yeah, yeah, those two are. I don't think are the iconic. I think yeah, they're maybe two of the best moments. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, iconic though. Number yeah. four is the Bat of Sloppy Joe. Killer. Five is the Chicken Dance. Wow. Yeah, that's insane. And falling off the flagpole with only four votes <laughs> is last. I had a feeling it was going to be that way, but yeah, I didn't think that one was going to win. But I do like your argument for it. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's just really important. I mean, all any you can make a case for a lot of these, for most yeah. of these, I think. But mm-hmm. wow. wow, okay. So let's give it up for the actual categories. Um, wow, we made it through. It was very. Yeah. I think it was pretty much. It went the way I thought it might have. For I the think. most for part, the yeah. Most part, I think, yeah. I think our listeners, are, you know, they know what's going on. They know what's they know what's good. Yeah. So for the next bit of the awards, we have our personal rankings for the five best and top three least best, <laughs> least best episodes. So did you do favorite or best? Uh, I think it's least. I thought, yeah, I think it says favorite on the list. Yeah, it's least it? favorite. Yeah. Okay. Because I kind of, I tweaked a little bit with that um, frame, with the framing it like that. So, so the way this is done on the results is so confusing. So I have to look at all of the results right now and work yeah, the yeah. listener ones out real quick. Ooh, okay. So this one isn't going to be as much mm. of a surprise as we read it, but so, but it's top five best period. I said, as like yeah. the little description, I was like, what you think is objectively the <laughs> best episodes, top five of the season. So how this one is going to go, same sort of deal. I'm going to give my number five. You'll give your number five and we'll reveal the number five from the listeners, and so on and so forth. Yeah, because I was thinking, like, this is not the same order, I, I don't think. If you were to take these episodes and apply it to my overall list, like, mm-hmm. they wouldn't fall into the same order. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. When you frame it as a top five per season, suddenly yeah, your different. list looks a little different. You know? Yeah, it does, yeah. I mean, it, it's really, it's not that different, yeah. but... Because if yeah. you're only looking at it against these 21 yeah. episodes it changes the context a little yep. bit and you exactly yeah mm-hmm. okay so my number five so we're going five to one so one being the best my number five is easy way yeah that's a good one didn't make my list and it, it was hard to what? it was hard well that was my Mariah Carey whistle note like there. The, um, the inhale octave where you, she like inhales and it's like, uh, I love that episode. It's just, I mean, season one, I just, there's so many I like. Some of them, I mean, I was influenced by my personal favorites, like I said, um, influenced mm-hmm. it. But uh, my number five, I picked, I ultimately, it was close. Uh, I got, I think I ultimately have to go with what an idol do. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I love the episodes where everything kind of flows together, you know? All right. So, the number five episode of season one, as voted by our listeners, is Strictly Ballroom. Great episode. Great episode. No real qualms there. I mean, I think... Surprised it's maybe last yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. five. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm surprised it's that low. But definitely not surprised to see it on there. 
Number four episode of the season, my personal pick. This is where I kind of started letting my personal thing come in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. I just can't let this episode go. I just can't. Yeah. Is a week first week. I know you love that one. It's a good it's a good one. It's just so important. I just love it. It's funny. And I said my piece about it in our episode on Mm -hmm. it. But yeah, can't let it go. It's still in my top. Uh, Mine's Battle of the Bands. It was my first episode I ever saw. I could be number three. My three and my four, I kind of was going back and forth. but. So number four, number four, best episode of season one as voted by our listeners is Heck of a Hanukkah. No way, really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand it. As yeah. we said, you know, it's an iconic, very memorable one. Probably has a nice warm place in a lot of people's hearts. Mm-hmm. You know, Bubby is in there, you know. I get it. I get it. I love that episode. For me, I mean, I think I feel this way about like holiday specials, the way you feel about episodes that deviate from the formula. Like the influenza type of thing. Yeah. 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 I can respect it. So number three best episode of season one for me is Movie Madness. Yep. That's a good one. I didn't. That was actually that's spoiler alert. That's my number six. But um I, my number three is Heck of Hanukkah. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's my number six on my list overall. They only played it during Christmas or, or Hanukkah time. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that I haven't seen it as much as other episodes yeah. um, affects its list because it kind of feels fresher too. On top of it, like mm-hmm. I said, it's just a really tight episode. It's really good. Yeah, they do. Like whenever I look at it, I just think of it as it as its own sure. thing. It's It's weird. I get it, yeah. So number three, as voted by our listeners... Is easy way. Nice. It's a good. I mean, it's a good pick. I'm actually yep. surprised it was number three, and not higher. I thought that might have been number one. Hmm. Personally. So number two, my number two pick is uh, Strictly Ballroom. Me too. Number two. Yep. We are just <laughs> on par with Strictly Ballroom, man. Yeah, I know. We just. That's crazy. It's both of our number sevens overall. It's both of our number two. And now it's both of our number twos of the season. So I have Heck of a Hanukkah six on my list, on my master list, and and Strictly Ballroom number seven. And I flipped them for this. Upon rewatching them too, I was like, Strictly Ballroom is it's really good, and it's just the I. It's one of my favorite episodes to watch. I would pick mm-hmm. it over Heck of a Hanukkah if I had to pick. Wow. So there we are, neck and neck again with. Yeah. With Strictly Ballroom, man. Um, So number two, as voted by our listeners, is Movie Madness. It's a good one. Yep. I mean, it's iconic, too. I mean, that's an iconic episode. Just the imagery. It's funny. It's really funny. And then I had to put that on my list, too, because it... Well, first of all, it was high on my regular master list anyway, Mm. but... That was one of our best episodes of the podcast, I think. Yeah, that was a good one. Like, one of our best bits came from that with the Salisbury steaks. <laughs> just so funny. I, yeah. So, my number one pick for the best episode of season one. Can I guess? Sure. Take, no. It's not Take My Sister. No. All right, Deep Chocolate. No. Okay, what? <laughs> Battle of the Bands. Oh, that was the one I just thought of. As you said, I was like, it's Battle of the Bands. Okay. That's a good one. I mean. It's got to be. It's got to be Battle of the Bands. Yeah. It just includes like everybody. Everybody. It's it's such a fun episode. It's so memorable from the music to just everything. My number one is. (laughs) Don't. What is it? You hate this episode. I think. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just shocked. I'm like, okay, I have no idea what it can be. Secrets and Spies. Secrets and Spies. I know. I mean, I have this episode always holds a special place in my heart. And I, I recognize it might not be like the best episode. I think Strictly Ballroom is arguably a better episode for me. But mm-hmm. I love Secrets and Spies. I know. I've quoted it more than maybe any other episode. I don't know what it is about it. I just love it. It's Tokyo Ricks. Tokyo Ricks. That's what it is. <laughs> gotta gotta give, it, give it up for Tokyo Ricks. So... The number one episode of the season, as voted by our listeners, is by a landslide. Scrub Day. Battle of the Bands. Wow. I mean, that's a good one. I, I can't I can't yeah. complain. Yeah. Yeah. So the ones that made all three of our lists are strictly 
Battle of the Bands. And that's it. Just those two, I think. And the listeners, I have Easy Way, they have Easy Way, I have Moving Madness, they have Moving Madness, I have Strictly Ballroom, they have Strictly Ballroom, I have Battle of the Bands, they have Battle yeah, of the Bands. Yeah, you had four, right? Of, of their yeah. four. And what was the one that you guys had different? Uh, heck of a Hanukkah in week first week. Oh, that's right, okay. I hear you, listeners! Oh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I hear you a couple times for this. I also have the benefit also of having a master list, which I looked mm-hmm. at. Oh, I didn't. I didn't look at my list. I started from one and I said, okay... My top three are from season two. So I automatically went to four. And I was like, that was Secrets and Spies. And I was like, yep, that would be my number one. I love that episode. Which, by the way, I meant I did look at your list recently and I saw that, that all of like, your top three are all from one season. It's, it's in a row. And then I thought about mine and I was like, this did not happen on purpose. I did not do this on purpose. All three seasons are represented in my top three. Your top three. That's pretty cool. That just made me really happy. I was like, wow. I lo- That's what I'm saying. I love season two. Like, we're going to, I mean, we're going to get into it in, in, in pretty soon in the next episode. Mm-hmm. I love season two. It's near. We're going to get into it a little bit at the end of this yeah, episode real quick because I have some thoughts. But um, uh, yeah, like when I was looking at the season one episode titles, I really was just like, this is a really good season. It's a great season. With the next thing now with the top three least. It was not difficult for me because no. there were just so many good episodes yeah. where I was like, yeah, no, definitely not this one. Definitely not this one. I just went straight to those three because all the other ones I just like so much. I was like, yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah. No, I hear you. As for my three least favorite, that was an easy one. I mean, I didn't even, I actually switched two of them, my one and two, because. Because why not? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we'll get into it here. Okay, so my number three least favorite episode of the season is After Hours. Huh. Yeah, that might be like four or five for me, but um, I picked Lewis in the Middle. Oh, okay. Which was number 57 on my overall list. I like the episode. I mean, like I said, 57, I still would, I'd watch that episode. If it was on, I'd be like, oh, cool, Lewis in the Middle. Mm-hmm. You know, I wouldn't complain. So the number three least favorite episode as voted by our listeners is, you're going to love it, Family Picnic. Nice. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe I swayed some people with my arguments. Maybe. I don't know. (laughs) That's uh, not a good one. I mean, it's harmless. It's not by much, though. It's like one to two votes tied with a lot of other episodes. So Really? Okay. Yeah. Man, now I really want to see the list just to kind of look at. Mm-hmm. stuff after this okay so cool. my number two least favorite episode of season one is swap.com i had a feeling you'd have it down there i had to do it i do like that episode like i was thinking about it and like i'd hate to be one of those people but when i'm just thinking of the show and everything <laughs> like ugh, out of all the episodes like the concept of this one aged poorly <laughs> Sure. Something about it. It's slimy and weird. And sure. I just, I don't really like Ernie Morton. And the episode is just, it's just boring. It's towards the bottom half of my list for sure. But everything about it feels a little off. Like the music is different. For me, there's like a lore behind it though. Yeah. If that makes sense. I mean, I get it though. It's like, it's like if I saw it, I'd be like, oh, it's the first episode that aired. Yeah. That, that's like a quirk that it has. And just like the fact that it, like it has such a really memorable... One off. One off and just there's a lot of memorable pieces from it. Mm. But yeah, I could see how some people would not like it. So, oh, my number two is Family Picnic. Yeah. Which is, I mean, my number 65 on my all-time list. I don't hate the episode. I just don't think it's a very good episode. Right. I think we're going to have the same number one, by the way. So, I think we all are. <laughs> we better. So, the listeners, number two, least favorite of season one is... Swap.com. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I could see how people don't like it. I mean, it could rub people the wrong way. My thing, I think it might have more nostalgia attached to it, maybe. Because mm-hmm. I think even Christy, yeah. she reacted to Swap.com on her channel and she was like, Oh, that's right. He's trying to bid on a card, like a Pokemon card. And it's like eBay. And he asked this guy, what do you want? And he says, I want your sister, which is an issue. <laughs> I think there's some problematic themes happening. 
People were just overly sensitive, I think. Yeah. But, but I mean, that. But you could, like, see it on her face. She was visibly, like, kind of cringing about the idea. And she was like, I think there might mm-hmm. be a little problem with this today, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think yeah. I think that's why. But yeah, I can see if some, especially if someone's watching it for the first time. I can see why they'd be like swap.com What the heck? Yeah, I could see may, maybe they think it's boring, but because I also think yeah, like the plot and everything for people who haven't watched it in like fifteen years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they'd be more apt to think like, "Whoa, this doesn't hold up." We're so familiar with it. Yeah. We're kind of more okay with it. But I think today, for some people to see that as like the first. Sure. Impression of even Stevens when they sit down to watch it on Disney Plus would kind of be like, whoa, this isn't as good as I remember. This isn't. Yeah. Also, I I like Ernie Morton, too. I think he actually might make that episode um, more enjoyable for me than than it would be otherwise. Mm-hmm. I can respect it at, at number two for the least favorite. Yeah. Number one, though, if anybody has any episode Worse than this number one episode. So why don't we just say ours at the same time, okay? So <laughs> okay. both of our pick, I'm assuming it's the same one. Both of our pick it's gotta be. for the number one least favorite episode of season one is <laughs> one, two, three, all, all about, about event. event. <laughs> and the number one least favorite episode as voted by our oh. listeners by a literal landslide. Wow, really? Is all about event. How many? How many? 64 votes. Nice. It should be. I mean, the two, it has a one off that's totally annoying. Yep. Charlotte is annoying. Yep. I'd probably rather have Jason Bagwell in another episode than Charlotte. Oh, God. Um, or even June Marie, for that matter. It's just annoying. Yeah. I would rather watch Family Picnic than All About Yvette. Mm hmm. So, again, with the top, with the least fave three. So, all three of theirs we had in some facet or another. For least favorite, that's pretty impressive, actually, I think. Yeah, it's interesting that we had a similar list. Yeah, because it's, it's also, like, a, a much smaller amount to choose from, like, only three. Yeah. And to think that we have... Yeah, true. Very, very close to the listeners. No, definitely. So, now that we've made it through... All of the categories, all of the award categories, the ranking section of this wrap-up special. The last thing we have are the little write-in responses from people, which I did allow myself to read ahead of time because I just, I couldn't help myself. I had to read something. You got to screen them anyway. Yeah. And it's just every time I saw that we got a new response, I was just excited. I needed to read something. So... Um, and of course, these were optional, so we got way less responses. <laughs> Definitely nowhere near 100 responses uh, to these mm-hmm. ones. For the first feedback question, it was, now some feedback for us. What has been your favorite thing or things about the podcast so far? People have said, your love for the show itself. I love the interviews as well. Um Cast and crew interviews have been amazing. Getting everyone's perspective on the production and legacy of the show is wonderful. I really love the tweet segments and the music for the segments. Plus, I just love B and E's fun banter with each other. <laughs> B and E. B and E. Breaking and entering. <laughs> That's funny though. We're B and E. B and E. Uh, episodes, discussions, and interviews. Your storytelling capabilities, the on-air chemistry, everything you say is hilarious. Why, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad everyone else in my life thought that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a good one. About what's been your favorite things about the podcast? Brittany doing all of the impressions of the dialogue. It's so good. <laughs> plus best quotes. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. It's funny. That made me so happy because I said, okay, no, there's got to be people out there who every time I break into one of those things has to be saying, shut her up. This is so annoying. <laughs> Watch you have, like, one of those as the other feed. <laughs> like, what are things you don't like? <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that, yeah. At least someone likes it. So, cast and crew interviews, voicemails, those are, like, a big one. Enjoyed everything so far. Love to relive the show through the podcast. Um, I like the episode descriptions the best because I like hearing your guys' points of view on the random stuff that happens on the show. Also, the interviews are really cool. Yeah. Your back and forth discussion is so engaging. It's genuinely great to hear from fellow Even Stevens fans. Because mm-hmm. these are all anonymous. Um, yeah. 
So here's a good one. Uh, my favorite moments from the podcast are the ones where I laughed the hardest. The Salisbury steak, a line I never paid attention to before, but now find hysterical. Conversation from Movie Madness, the unexpected bathroom accident from Strictly Ballroom, and the idea of Force Ghost Hayden Christensen or Qui-Gon Jinn showing up to an Even Stevens reboot to convince an adult successful engineer, Louis Stevens, that comedy is his true destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Quagga and Jin would be the best. <laughs> Just Liam Neeson in any even Stevens universe would be the best. <laughs> So another one that says the overall chemistry between both of you—that's a very common thing, which is making yeah, me I've so that. happy. That yeah, yeah. That's so nice. That's cool. I'm glad. But we even know, like, the first episode we ever did, we were like, "Wow, like our chemistry is like really good, like quick." Yeah. It kind of just happened. Yeah, like right away. Like our first episode went by so quick. And then I said, yeah. well, I, you can hear me at the end. I'm like, well, I, I think that went really well. <laughs> yeah, it's like it was like the second time ever we had spoken to or something. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was crazy. I mean, granted, we had been sort of talking through comments on my blog for like two sure. years or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, technically, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Couple years. but yeah, the first time we actually sat down and sort of met face to face, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Crazy. So just continuing some of these. I love that you have former cast members on. I love the tweet segment. That's also a very popular one. People really like the tweets. Yeah, me too. That's a good one. Every episode is great. Every time I watch an episode and some small moment hits me, you always touch on it on your podcast. For example, the Limp Biscuit thing. We touch on every moment. Yeah, true. <laughs> so odds are we probably. <laughs> Again, so the Tom Virtue interview comes up a lot as a favorite thing. Yeah, that was a great uh, And mm-hmm. then again, this person says that they really like all the different segments because they think it wraps up each podcast episode nicely. Mm-hmm. I like this one. Someone said, you guys do a great job of maintaining the balance between giving a, quote, walkthrough of the episode and giving your personal thoughts slash commentary. I really love the moments where you hone in on something small and analyze it or start cracking up over it. I also really enjoy the tweet segment. Yeah, people love the tweets. Who can't? And you know what? It's also the sound bite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just crazy. Like people, it kind of like connects the world between, you know, all the fans. Yeah. Mm hmm. And even not fans, just random people. And even just people, yeah, <laughs> tangentially who are familiar with the show. It's great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, more more love for Twitter. Someone just said, we do a fantastic job. Happy to see such an underrated show get the attention it deserves. Again, for trivia and tweets and interviews. Someone said, beside the episode discussions, I really honestly love all of the side segments, especially the tweets, and I really enjoy the interviews. I have only listened to the Honey Boy review as far as special episodes go. I'm not all that interested in those besides that Honey Boy one, which I really liked. Really? And hmm. overall, I look forward to the ranking status of each episode. It's funny because I feel like a lot of people like the special episodes. Someone, yeah, another person, someone said, the special episodes, they're a great mix of emotional and funny. Yeah. Hmm. Um, just more people yeah. who say they like hearing our opinions because they love the show. Hmm. Yeah, and then again... Uh, the plot summaries of, of the episodes and going down the rabbit hole of trying to make sense of random throwaway lines or plot holes. It's always hysterical. You guys really do have great chemistry and are fun to listen to. There you go again. Nice. And yeah, someone who said that they love how we got to speak with Tom Virtue and that it must have been awesome to hear that he was a fan of our podcast. Uh, yeah, definitely like those type of moments are the, you know, it's the it's a perk of doing this. Mm-hmm. But then to have somebody who you've lived with in you know on your TV for yeah for since you've been mm-hmm. a kid um, to have them say that they found your podcast I mean and that they find it enjoyable and fun to listen to and all this stuff it's like that's yeah. crazy yeah yeah I just, I can't even explain what it what it, the importance of that to me or and I'm sure you can't either but yeah no words for it no words. So then, heading into the, is there anything you'd like more of, less of, how could we improve? The responses are, again, more cast and crew interviews. A lot of people mainly just said more interviews. Um, Someone said, nothing, your podcast is beyond perfect. Why, thank you. Another person, you've pretty much nailed it, always enjoyable. Uh, Some people want more Shia stuff. Like what? Just anything Shia related, they said. Uh, interesting someone said those top five episodes of other people like mom's top 10 or those listener topics or holiday episodes which is so funny because i was like one person mentioned my mom (laughs) and i told her i said you got love from one person ma no she got yeah i think people like that episode (laughs) um 
because you got good feedback after that one yeah too. i think yeah even tom listened to that one um, yeah other people saying i think it's great the way it is um another person just more of the podcast <laughs> they want more it's like no we're just gonna end here forget season two and three season one that's it. Someone, another person, more cast interviews, and they just listed a bunch of the cast. Margot, AJ, Lauren, Nick, Christy, and then said, and of course, the Messiah himself, Shia. Besides Shia, Nick and AJ are like my top. Yeah. Out of the yeah. people we haven't done. And then this person also said, side note, it would be amazing in all caps if you guys could be guests on Christy's Kitchen Throwback. <laughs> Uh, tell me about it. That would be amazing. Uh, That's so funny. I was like, oh my gosh, imagine. <laughs> I mean, obviously it'd be cool for us, but then like viewers that would get like no views on her channel. It's like, who are these two people? <laughs> How would she even promote that? Like, what would she put? Kim Boss or like Ren, Ren Stevens, Stevens cook something with mm, even Stevens ranked. Yeah. With B and E. <laughs> with B and E. <laughs> people would be like, who is that? Who the, who the heck is that? Uh, who that? Another one, this is nice. Uh, I really do like your idea for a reboot of Lewis having finally gotten everything he thought he wanted and living up to the family standard at last, only to realize that comedy and being funny is a part of him he's lost but wants to get back. Mm -hmm. That would be a reboot I would watch. So if you guys ever wanted to talk about that idea more, I would love to hear it. Yeah. You know, I don't know. There's some, there's some stuff there. There is, definitely. I think, I think after... This whole thing is we're done with the series. I think we might we could do maybe like a reboot talk episode, yeah. perhaps. Or yeah, no, I definitely want to do that. Yeah. So yeah, so more people asking about more interviews. Um, and someone said, try not to be too critical of the silly show that knew it was only going to be on for three seasons. <laughs> what? It's like first of all, try not to be too critical. The one of the most fun parts of the podcast is to be critical. Like we love the show. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm not criticizing things like I want. It, I don't want it to be different. No. Like, I want everything for the most part. I mean, with a couple outliers, I want. I would be upset if it wasn't how it was. Mm -hmm. I were just kind of pointing out silly stuff that we notice because we've seen it so many times. Yeah. We got a review on uh, Apple that like said that we spend too much time explaining jokes. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, I was like, we're not explaining jokes. Like, like if we hone in, like that other person said that they enjoy that. Like if we hone in on something, we're not trying to explain it to you guys. Like this is why this is funny. Yeah, yeah. We're just appreciating what makes it funny and we're just appreciating yeah. how funny it is and where and and at the end of the day we are two even stevens fans who never well, at least me have like never really gotten to talk to another fan about why we love this so much and about why we find it funny and about why it works for us or doesn't work for us so that's really what this is we're just loving it or and breaking it down super far yeah. because we can and we want to and it just happens and yeah <laughs> we're explaining it more like to eat to ourselves i think yeah it's like a comedian who makes jokes about like his mom or his wife they don't want them to be any different they just are kind of like pointing out these silly things that they do yeah exactly yeah. and everything we do comes from a place of love man like 100 percent. like i want to say i want to really make sure people know that like if we're ever critical of anything yeah it's because we love it so much and yes. it's like it's it's always coming from a place of deep admiration we're not turning into suddenly oh this sucks or something like it's never yeah. it's never mm -hmm. that there are a few there are a few things that are untouchable in my life like from especially from my childhood yeah like you know pop culture wise mm -hmm. um this show changed me more than probably anything else in my life yeah just it made me who i am i mm -hmm. i'm not if i'm ever like quote unquote harsh on it it's not it's because it's so close to you yeah there's positive criticism there's negative criticism criticism is has a negative connotation but it's not mm -hmm. inherently a negative thing mm -hmm. yeah we're close to it we are talking about it to each other because we're it, we're both close to it even Yvette and Charlotte, that episode is, it's, it's cringy. It's part of the 65 package. I would never want them to say, okay, this is not canon anymore. Like, yeah. I love this show. So then a few other ones, someone pointed out that they like our Instagram page. And here's what, here's the thing that I think is so funny. Okay. So for what have been your favorite things, someone said Brittany doing all the impressions of the dialogue, but now to answer the question... Is there anything you'd like more of? 
less of, how could we improve? All someone wrote was Britney's Lewis impressions. <laughs> more of, less of. <laughs> exactly. You, okay, so you want more of it, less of them, or should I get better at it? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I don't think it's, I think we can rule out get better. Yeah. I think depending on who it is, I mean, maybe think you should do less of it, but then that other person thinks you should do more of it. Could be the same person. It's yeah, exactly. But they, they spell these few people spelled my name wrong different times. Uh, um, so it's just funny. Part of me feels like yeah. they definitely want less of it. Yeah. But they, but obviously they don't care enough to say how much less or yeah how much more. I think we can rule it out because there's there isn't as much thought put behind it you have to tell me <laughs> <laughs> you have to make it clear <sighs> do you want more of it i like them less of it i think i think more people like them, than not like them <laughs> i think i'm down with the impressions i hope so i mean i have fun with it and sometimes i just can't help it i let my favorite is modern shia impressions. <laughs> that's my favorite one when you do the modern, like where he developed the southern accent, that's yes. my favorite. Like one of my favorite ones, though, was when I said, like one of the most on point ones I think I ever did was, so can I put you down for a dozen boxes or whatever? Like it sounded like, <laughs> yeah, it sounded so good. close. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I take pride in my impressions. Yeah. <laughs> so when someone said potentially less of, I was like, ouch. But I knew, I knew that there's probably someone out there who finds it extremely annoying. So if they want less of, I get it. They might be talking about my Shia impressions. But they said Britney's Lewis impressions. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's pretty clear. I don't do them enough, I don't think. I think I just do it. I don't. I think I do it like off record anyway. I don't even know if I do it much on the show. Yeah. Um, so then just a few other people just keep, keep the content coming. And someone wrote a really, 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 really long one. Which I probably won't be able to have time to read. Um, but basically just how much the show meant to them and like fun memories uh, and how taken aback they were upon revisiting the show about how talented Shia was at such a young age. Um, mm -hmm. And that they're happy to discover the podcast. They said that there are so many fans of the show who admire and appreciate the work that we're doing as well. And sincerely wish us the best. Our dedication is so inspiring for them. And that they hope we, that we get the chance to meet the cast members of our favorite childhood show. That's such a nice thing to wish. That's super cool. That is really <laughs> cool. That's nice. I hope we are inspiring people. I mean, I was inspired to do a podcast by other podcasts. Mm -hmm. And like paying it forward is kind of cool. Yep. You know. Yeah. We just do our little thing in the corner of the inner internet world. In, and the we, internet, yeah, our own we, little uh, corner that, yeah. <laughs> hopefully we inspire at least somebody. Yeah. Just like Ren wants to just touch one person. Yeah. <laughs> that's all the time. Oh, that's all the time. Um, so then the last response thing was just any final thoughts on the season. One person simply just wrote the bunny in my brain goes hip hop. I told you. <laughs> so it's yeah. a keep, keep up the good work. Uh, I love the first season. It brings back a simple time in my childhood. So thankful for it. Um, this is a really great first season of television. Your faves could never. <laughs> Weak start, but quickly gets its footing. Love the Lewis Mirror Talks. Wish it remained. Great season setting up the series. Probably my least favorite of the three, but still great. Can't wait for season two. Season one is definitely my favorite because I think the humor is the best. Uh, which I'm inclined to agree with. It's just like, it's it's just a different brand of even Steven's humor. Season two is my favorite, mm -hmm. but I don't think that you could have season two be as effective for me if it wasn't for season one. Mm -hmm. So another person that said this season was their introduction to the show when it first aired. So for mm -hmm. that, it will always hold a special nostalgic place in their heart. Yeah. Someone said this season gets super good in the second half. Really does. Um, another person, weakest season, but the weakest season of Even Stevens is still amazing. Another person, mm -hmm. season two is better than season one. Can't wait. <laughs> another person, some of these episodes really impressed me. There were a few duds, but even the duds had their good moments. You can really see Shia come into his own and know he's something special. A lot of people, again, just saying that this season has the extreme levels of nostalgia, which I agree. Like when I was looking down the episodes, I was like, wow, these are like really when I think of even Stevens I think of almost every episode in this season hmm I don't but I think of some but um 
It's, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a good, it's a, I mean, it's a great season. Yeah. The first half has a different feel than the second half. Like that one person said. I agree with that. Another person said it, it does do a nice job of introducing the characters and really giving us a sense of what the show's about. You guys did a great job covering all of the episodes and I look forward to hearing your thoughts about seasons two and three. Keep up the good work. Uh, another person, season one is by far my favorite. Um... Another person, some of my favorite episodes are in season one. This is an awesome show, no matter the season. I think there are scenes from each episode throughout the entire series that are memorable. This season was an excellent start to a wonderful show. Another, I have enjoyed your podcast a lot. It really makes the show fresh and more exciting. I find myself sometimes talking out loud and adding my two cents. Keep up the good work. And then just a few little you know, short things. This podcast rules. Congrats on finishing the first season. Please try everything in your power to get Shia, of course. Um, nope. Great. Yeah. Nah, that's, that's, let's least on our, yeah, who cares? No, of course. Yeah, um, now nah, we're trying. That is the ultimate dream. Uh, I, I love this one. Someone said, great first season, especially without beans. Oh, well. <laughs> Wait, was that a beans knock or like a... It's as good as the season could be without beans or it's the best season because there's no beans. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. I think they might be saying it's good despite not having beans. Yeah, it's weird. I do like beans. We're split on beans, but I like beans. And then Onward and Upward only gets better and I could rewatch this season and laugh twice as hard. It's incredible to think how pivotal... How pivotal the show was for the future cast members or for the future of the cast members yeah. and and then thanks guys and that's all the feedback and all of the categories and all of the rankings so i think the last thing i really wanted to do before we you know we're officially saying goodbye to season one now so sad uh but so awesome that we finished a whole season we got through a season wrap up so exciting Mm -hmm. yeah it's just moving on but before we move on i did start to think about things (laughs) and i wanted to give some season two predictions and i was telling you obviously we're not thinking oh what's gonna happen in season two or anything like that i predict uh, Luce and Tanya are going to get together? <laughs> <laughs> but more so about how I think I'm going to perceive the second season. Gotcha. Now that we've done a whole season and our whole process mm-hmm. and like how we approach all of this, mm-hmm. just doing a lot of thinking and I just wrote some stuff out. So season two is the season I've watched the least. It's just always been the season that I don't think I like the most. So because of that, I just naturally yeah. have watched it the least. You know, you always say that you view season two as this like amazing sweet spot in the series. Whereas yeah. to me, it's always been the awkward middle child of the series. And it feels like a growing pains transitional season. Oh, no, that's that season three for me is the awkward is like the awkward stage. I, I mean, I, I like season three a lot. But so season one is what got me into the show. Um mm-hmm. It was already my it was my favorite show already before season two started. But season two is what made it my favorite show of all time. Mm. I love pretty much every episode in that season. Gutter Queen maybe is like the only outlier that I don't love. Um, that's towards the end. And I think it's like the last episode. I love these episodes, uh, especially like the first half of the seasons. Like, oh my gosh, it's so good to me. See, they're, they're, the episodes are tighter for me, like consistently. Mm. Even the bad episodes are at least like narratively they're tight. Because then I went on to say I was just sort of ranting in my notes. I went on to say that you watch Steven Stevens for the comedy, whereas yeah, for me, no matter what I watch, I prioritize story above like all else. Sure. And when I started thinking about season two, I started thinking of that. I feel like they kind of prioritized the comedy the most in season two. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they do it a lot in season three as well. But the more comedic things stand out in my memory more when I think of season two. And I, and that's not to say that season two doesn't have good character mm-hmm. moments because it totally does. And those will probably yeah. be episodes that I have ranked higher. Sadie Hawkins. Exactly. That's the first one that comes to mind. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it definitely does. But in my memory, when I think of season two, I think of a little bit more outlandish, a little bit more wacky, like certain stuff like that really being pushed to the forefront. And so I think yeah. that's what that's our biggest disconnect, I think, with season two. Yeah. And I yeah. And I think there are going to be people who are like me who watched it, mm-hmm. who connected to it for the comedy. Myself and my best friend growing up, we watched it mm-hmm. for that reason. 
I've met people who are also like you, who their favorite part of the show is Lewis and Tawny. Mm-hmm. Or I'm, I'm not saying that's necessarily your favorite part of the show, but, yeah. you know, they love that that development. And that's all their favorite episodes are Lewis Tawny episodes. And they find the best parts of the series are that. And I respect that, too. I mean, like everyone's going to I don't want everyone to feel the same. Yeah. Nor do I expect everyone to love the show for the same reason that I love the show. Mm-hmm. I'd actually prefer it if they didn't love it yeah. for the same reason I love it because it they makes feel special. why yeah. I love <laughs> it feel more special. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. season two for me was I wanted to be Lewis in season two. Mm-hmm. But overall, though, when I think of Lewis, I think of season two Lewis. I uh, don't. It's weird. Like I when I like if someone says even Stevens, I think of, I don't know what I think of. I just think of like. I don't know. I just think of season one. I think I think of a lot of things in season yeah. one, and I think of a lot of things in season three as well. And then, but I think because you know you're a girl, I'm a guy. Mm-hmm. You we connect like I connected to Lewis. I you know vicariously. Whereas you, I know you've said you've connected to Tawny mm-hmm. and at times Ren and you know stuff like that too. I mean, I still love Lewis though. Obviously. Oh no, of course I know. Yeah, of course he. I know he's still like your favorite part of the show. But I'm just saying, like as far as how we placed ourselves into the universe mm-hmm. was different. I wanted to be Tawny because she got Lewis. Z- That's exactly. why I wanted to be Tawny. Exactly. So you're going to gravitate towards those episodes more as well for a different reason. But also I get why you like the the stand-up side of Lewis. And I love that side too. I wanted to be a stand-up comedian at one point in my life too, but I also wanted to be a drummer mm-hmm. like at one point in my life. Like that was my dream. Season three even, that's why I have a connection. Like the, every stage of the show... I have a connection with and I have it means something incredibly special to me in my life. Yeah, it's untouch like I said, it's untouchable. The show's untouchable in general, but season two for me is the sweet spot. Yeah, but I think one thought I had was that for me, like an episode is only as good as the story. Like it's only mm-hmm. as good as how I think of the plot line any sort of development like things that are happening like the comedy can only be as good as everything else going around it basically yeah but here's the thing for me season two i think season one had great storylines i think a couple of times they kind of like did a take on you know typical tropes with their own unique flair Mm -hmm. but season two i think had like a little bit i like the concepts of the episodes in season two more personally. Well, because they're more, they're more, un- I, I will say they're more unique. They're more, yeah. like in that they're, respect, I can understand yeah. it being like even Stevens, you know, because it's really out there. It's thinking outside the box a lot of the time. Yeah. But what I was thinking for my prediction was that I think I am going to enjoy season two a lot more this time. Like I predict that there will be a lot more surprises for me because this is the season I've watched the least. I hope so. And I'm predicting that I'm probably going to laugh a lot. <laughs> like I said, I, I I wouldn't be shocked if I start laughing at things I never laughed at before or never thought was that funny before. Yeah. I, I said that I don't know if it'll make me wish I could change any of my rankings, but I predict that this journey will make me feel like I'm watching season two for the first time in some ways because of how we do our process and because I've watched it the least. I mean, I've seen, when I say the least, this is what I mean too. I've seen all of these episodes Dino. so many times you have no idea. But what I'm saying is like, if we, if I were to give it, like a number example, just obviously this isn't how many times I've seen these episodes, but just as an example, say I've seen all season one, a hundred times, all season three, a hundred times. I've maybe seen season two, 50 times or something. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 60, 70, you know, it's just, it's just, yeah. but I've just naturally seen it. I've avoided it. That's what I'm saying. Also, if you know that you already don't like it by the 40th time, you might be kind of like <laughs> not paying as much attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you semi checking out, maybe not like analyzing it the same way. Exactly. Per se. Uh, yeah. I'm excited. I hope you, I hope you change your mind a little bit, at least about season two. Cause I think I'm going to start liking it for different reasons. Cause like, I, because the other day, and this is how I know this or why I think this the other day I, I had to find something in wild child. I can't remember what I needed. I love that episode. But, but I, I was know. like double checking something and I had to check that episode. And it was like towards the end when like Lewis's science fair project starts running amok. Mm-hmm. And this was like, after we started talking about how we love chaotic stuff, yeah. this whole chaos breaks out and like everyone's running around and Lewis is saying like, run for your lives. 
and then this guy runs by holding a lamb. <laughs> Yes. It's like he's running by and you just hear bah! I was That's like, <laughs> so good. And I just started oh, dying laughing and I was like, oh no. Don't tell yeah. me that this is going to be my situation with season two. Another thing I also was thinking was how you said, you know, like you're a guy, I'm a girl. Mm. I think that season two is a very guy geared season. I th- and I think they realized that, I mean, there's developments with Bobby and Ren. Yeah. I think they also realized what they had in a sense with Lewis mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, they kind of not exploited it. That's not the right term, but you know, definitely uh, tried to bring it, it out even more. Yep. And that's why, that's what I think. And that's why we were talking about like color coded. Sure. Yeah. We, the, the colors we think of when we think of the seasons. And for some reason, season two, I always think of green. And for some reason that color, I just associate with like guys and, and just, I don't know. It's, mm. it's just weird. And so... Interesting. Yeah. And so that's why when I think of season two, I just kind of think of that sort of vibe. And then when I watch two or three season two episodes with my cousin Keith, who's a 21-year-old guy, out of all the episodes we watched, he was like, yeah, I liked that one. And it was a season two episode. Which one? Uh, Easy Crier, which I know you like. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, you told me about this one. Yeah. And so yeah, it's yeah. like, it's weird, you know? So I'm not that crazy about that episode, but I watched it with yeah. my 21-year-old guy cousin, and he's like, yeah, I liked that one the best. I'm like, this is so weird, you know? Yeah. So Maybe It might just come down to that. Yeah. It might, you know? Like, season three had a lot of Lewis and Tawny stuff. Not a lot, but, you know. It added more relationship stuff. You know, Twitty and Allison, Boy on a yeah. Rock, The Kiss, like, Leaving yeah. Stevens. They had a yeah. lot of that sort of stuff, which is why... Uh, almost Famous. Yeah, which is why I really loved yeah. a lot of that stuff, so... No, yeah. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah. It might just come down to that, really. It's really interesting. It is, that, yeah. Yeah. It's like our Star Wars conversation, how we always say, like, we see it differently, I think, because of just that perspective, too. Yeah, like people think the prequels are trash, but I loved the story they told in the prequels over everything else. So interesting. Like like the story literally outweighs crazy all of the problems for the prequels. Like that's (laughs) that is how much I prioritize story. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah, and uh, yeah, I think it just comes down to that. Maybe it's just you know, just how we how we what we prioritize. Um, Yeah, yeah. we'll get into it. The more episodes, I think, will kind of give us a different perspective talking to each other as well. Yeah. Whereas like before we just were blogging about it to ourselves. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's where I yeah. think I'm going to be at. I'm excited. Just naturally because of the way we do this, the way we talk about it. You know, when I watch it, I have to like keep my eyes out for different things and, you know, just trying to go into things with a fresh mind every time I sit down to watch it. I feel like because of that, I hope that I will be able to walk away with a different appreciation for season two. I think I will. I, that's what I'm predicting. I will. I think I think you will at least in some regards. I mean, yeah, we both will. I think I think we'll both have like a, each other's perspective, and it'll help. I mean, I definitely think there's going to be more times than not that we're going to be fighting. But <laughs> it's all, that's I'm so excited about it. By the way, I love when we bicker. It's the like our debates are so fun. Oh my gosh! And we haven't even and like we've barely scratched the surface, probably of what our debates are going to be like. And like, we've already gotten feedback from people from some of our smaller debates in season one, but you know, saying like, Oh, we, I love it when you disagree. And I'm like, well, I feel like we've barely scratched the surface of that. Yeah. So. Wait till season two. Season three, I think we'll agree the most. Really? I'm predicting. I think so. Hmm. Cause I think, th- I think, I think so. Okay. We'll see. That's interesting. That'll be for the next predictions, <laughs> which won't be for another year. Probably <laughs> so. <laughs> well, yeah, cool. I'm excited. And, uh, yeah, I think yeah. that's about it. Thank you all for listening, for voting. Thank you to the, if we're being exact, the 101 yeah. of you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. That took the time to fill out the survey. It just made this so much more fun. And, you know, getting 101 responses, I think, you know, it's just a really solid number to get an idea of 101 <laughs> even Stevens fans, you know? So that was so great. It was so cool to see where we line up with you guys, which is pretty darn close, I'd say. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. As we move on from season one, there are lots of other things to look forward to. Um, More cast and crew interviews, of course, diving into season two, and who knows what else. Yeah, just looking forward to it. And of course, now with Disney+, Plus, I think it's just been... You know, a lot more people are able to watch along with us and 
looking forward to being able to do more of this as we go on. Yeah, me too. It's going to be fun. So thank you guys so much for listening. Be sure to follow on all of the socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even stevensrank.com. Of course, be sure to leave a voicemail or send us a listener letter. We'd love to hear from you. I think that'll do it for our first ever wrap-up special. This was so much fun. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I'm already excited to do this again. <laughs> I know, me too. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a, a ways away, but we'll get there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So thank you guys so much, and we will see you in the next episode. See ya. See ya. See ya.